Thousands of embedded devices are attacked every day by hackers. Would you even know if your device was under attack? I'm Alan Grau, and I'm the president and co-founder of Icon Labs. Icon Labs is a software company that provides security solutions for embedded and IoT devices. We've partnered with Renaissance to develop integrated security solutions to help you build security into your device. In this video, we'll talk about intrusion detection and how to know whether your device is under attack and solutions to allow you to more easily build this protection into your product. There are a number of security risks for IoT devices. Today, we're going to be talking about how we detect and report some of the cyber attacks that can occur against embedded devices and IoT devices, and device hijacking. And again, how do we know someone is trying to either hijack our device or probe our device as part of a cyber attack? In order to protect an embedded device from attack, we first need to know it's being attacked. And that's where intrusion detection comes into play. Some of the examples of why this is important include what are known as the MedJack attacks. And these are a series of four attacks that were reported in a security report from a company called TrapX Security. In this report, they looked at four different hospital data breaches and how they occurred. And in each case, hackers broke into the hospital networks and planted malware on a medical device. As a result, they were able to hijack these devices and turn them against the hospital networks and probe further in the network, discover patient information, and exfiltrate it from the network. One other note is that hackers are often targeting hospital networks because of the value of healthcare record information. Insurance information can sell in the black market for as much as 40 times the value of a stolen credit card, and it can be used in insurance fraud. Another attack against embedded devices is the black energy malware that targets industrial automation and energy production systems. And this malware is a particularly noisy virus. Again, it attacks embedded devices, but the reason it remains undetected is simply because nobody's paying attention to what's going on in these control networks. Oftentimes, the black energy virus will result in 50 to 100 times the level of network traffic as is normally seen on these networks, so it's easily detected Again, if somebody's paying attention. Another widely publicized attack was against airplanes. Hackers have claimed that they've been able to hack from the Wi-Fi network into the control network of airplanes during flight, even issuing commands to the control system from the network, changing the course and altitude of the flight. There have even been reports of attacks against light bulbs. Connected light bulbs with Wi-Fi connectivity have been breached and used by hackers as an entry point into corporate networks. In each of these cases, the underlying problem is that the devices themselves have no ability to know that they're under attack. They receive packets and either process the packets or drop the packets, but don't have enough intelligence in them to distinguish between malicious traffic and good traffic. And that's where intrusion detection comes in. Intrusion detection for an embedded device starts with an embedded firewall. A firewall can add support for rules-based filtering to control what ports, protocols, and IP addresses a device talks to, and can also support things such as stateful packet inspection, threshold filtering, and protocol-specific deep packet inspection. If we look back at the airplane attack as an example, the control systems on an airplane operate in a very static network. They may only talk to 10 or 15 other IP addresses during the entire operation of the device. So if a new IP address shows up and starts talking to the device, that's probably malicious traffic, and you want to block and report that information. This is also true in industrial control networks. These are very static networks, so the presence of new IP addresses, new traffic, or any unusual or unexpected behavior should be reported so that you can take action to block that attack. For example, if the device doesn't support a protocol such as SSH, and it starts receiving traffic on the SSH port, that's probably malicious traffic and should be reported. In the case of the target data breach, if the HVAC system had had intrusion detection software on it, it would have been generating events showing strange traffic. There was far more traffic flowing through the device than previously had been experienced, and it was sending packets to foreign countries that should have never been talking to the device. These are simple things to detect but you have to add the software to the device to provide those protections. The other thing that's needed to support an intrusion detection system 
is communication back to a management system. A security agent on an embedded device can provide a number of important features, including policy management, event reporting, status monitoring, and situational awareness. It can also support features such as secure firmware updates. But with reports, you've got the information needed to block the attack before the hackers are able to do damage. Security is a critical requirement for IoT devices. IoT devices are under attack continuously and can even be a gateway to attacking other devices on the network. Icon Labs and Renaissance have partnered to provide integrated solutions to allow you to more quickly and easily build security into your device. You can go to the Synergy Gallery and download a demo solution today.